people started going, I'm sick of work. I'm working all day long, sacrificing my family. When you sacrifice what you love mm. for success, you get neither. Instead of saying, I'm gonna do one thing so that in the future I'll get something else. You say, no, I want that thing now. Not in a selfish way, but because you honor the time you have right. on earth. Dude, it's beautiful. So it's not about, time management is not about controlling your time. It's about who controls your time. Well, I'm so excited to get into this conversation and talk about kind of like uh, your book, essentially anti-time management you got it. and how work-life balance just isn't working anymore. And so what, what are some of like the things that have led up to this consensus that you've come up with? Well, let me tell you this, like balance is a great word, but it doesn't work for work and life. And the, re the reason is because balance in physics literally means motionless. Mm. Balance means you don't move. It means stagnant. It means stale. But we try to put it up as this thing that's success. It's never been that way. And it never will be that way until you're dead. The, the greatest balance in life is death. <laughs> that's facts. <laughs> Motionless. Yeah. And so the idea isn't to always try to figure out how does like, how do I get, you know, this many hours of sleep and this many hours of whatever. Right. It's dynamic. You want to be able to have, like in basketball, you want the, the ball to move forward in the direction you want it to go. That requires imbalance. That requires pushing. That requires that requires trajectory. And so the idea of anti-time management is this. If you go back in history, time management actually has a very dark past. It was never designed to give people their time and their freedom back. It mm. was designed specifically as a tool to control others. It was designed to measure every drop of blood, sweat, and tears from workers. Facts. And you, and you go like, wow, why do we use it in self-help vernacular? I don't know. But I do know that once managers and leaders started realizing people could manage their own time instead of someone else doing it, mm -hmm. they thought they could get more out of people. Wow. It has nothing to do with personal freedoms. I, I can't stress it. Time management has zero to do. <laughs> That's wild, man. With personal <laughs> happiness, productivity, or or even money. It is all for the corporation. Once you realize that, you go, well, what's the solution? You know, and I call it anti-time management. But I did this because, like in short, when I wrote my last book, The Power of Starting Something Stupid, people would start their stupid idea, their new mm. project, their new idea, their new video, their new podcast, they they write their new article, they do their new book, they do their next post. It's not what they wanted. They didn't want the thing they were doing. They wanted what they thought would come from the success wow. of the thing they were doing. It's a two-step. I'll do this and then I'll do that. If you can just jump over, like people are obsessed with goals, habits, and strengths. Those are tools. They're not ends. Mm -hmm. We've made them ends unto themselves. So you can jump past that and go, what's the job of the goal? What's the job of the habit? What's the job of these strengths that I have? And you get there and you can work in a way that creates a moat to support your time, protect your time, protect your family, protect your availability, protect your ability to do whatever you want, whenever you want. When you work endlessly toward a goal, you never get it. Mm. That's anti-time management. That's beautiful. And I, why, why would you actually say, why has balance become bigger than, I would, I mean, I kind of go with rhythm. Like it's Rhythm's like, a great word. Yeah, I like rhythm. But why, why has balance been the word that it's, been accepted and and kind of the goal. I think it's just misunderstood. You know, mm. it's it's a great word. And if you if you really were to dive into like when it started being used in this way, well yeah, people started going I'm sick of work. I'm working all day long sacrificing my family. When you sacrifice what you love mm. for success, you get neither. Come on. So when that happened, people were like, oh, I need to be able to balance. I need to, I need to be a seesaw. I need to be able to go there and come back. And you know what? There's a case for that, but not to, does it not always happen. Rarely, if ever, people don't want that. They want their life moving forward. Mm -hmm. They want things to happen. They want to be able, especially today in the 21st century, they want to be able to think and create and not do the things that they don't want to do, not because they're lazy, but because they, their time can be spent better somewhere else. So, you know, things have changed. But I'll, I'll tell you this, like I'll get super real. I had a brother-in-law pass away at the age of 21. Wow. And when that happened, I mean, that shook us. Like it changed everything about the way we thought about time. Mm -hmm. and, and life is short, but it's not some cliche. Like it's a real thing. 
And some might go, yeah, life is long. And you go, well, I guess it depends on what perspective you're looking at. You sure, know, like right. sitting in a room where it's boring is a very long time, even though it might be only a couple minutes, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but a few years later, my uh, our fourth son, he caught pertussis, also known as whooping cough. Oh, wow. He also passed away. And so I have these these two, we named him Gavin after my brother-in-law, Gavin. We have these two Gavins buried in Hawaii. That's where I live. And... We visit these graves all the time. It's become my kids' playground. It's a bizarre thing to say, but it's a real thing. And when you when you when you come up thinking like, oh my gosh, I might not live that long, it changes when you work, why you work, how you work. Mm. Instead of saying, I'm gonna do one thing so that in the future I'll get something else, you say, No, I want that thing now. Not in a selfish way, but because you honor the time you have right. on earth. Dude, it's beautiful. So it's not about time management is not about controlling your time. It's about who controls your time. Dude. <laughs> so let's, uh, like, let, let, let's get practical in the sense of like, what would be like step one, uh, would you say when it comes to getting your time back and or, you know, defining who it is c- that controls my time? Let's say step, step one would really be to kind of step back and a step back is not a step backwards. It's almost like a step up. So you can kind of see that whole vision 360. Meaning, I call it like a, like, it's like a medical. So when you realize that what you're doing is really for something else and you go, okay, that's something else. That's what I want. That's my purpose. And you can have multiple purposes, professional, personal, people, Mm. play. I call it the four Ps. Okay. And then you look at those and you go, well, to make that thing happen, whatever, I'll, I'll talk general and then we can get specific. To make that thing happen, what's my priority? Because you got to understand in kindergarten, we were taught goals and priorities like this. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to give you a jelly bean at the end of the day. That had nothing to do with the jelly bean. That was about the teacher controlling the children. You're not going to get a jelly bean yeah. if you don't do that thing. Right. And we've used that methodology throughout our entire lives. That's not the way life works. Mm. You could have freaking had the jelly bean right now the whole time. And you still could have been, you know, doing your thing without having to be controlled. Yeah. So priorities mean you have to rescue your dream from the end of a timeline and bring it front and center. So now you have like these four purposes. You create four priorities that align them. Create four projects. I know I'm going fast here. But imagine you have four projects and you overlapped them. Priority overlap. One decision can make all four happen at the same time. So for example, I wanted to work for my cell phone. This is a long time ago. This is, this is a long time ago, okay? This is when f- phones folded. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But the reason was if I can work for my cell phone, it becomes what's in psych- psychology called a forcing function. But I told myself, if I could figure out a way to work differently, mm-hmm. if I could figure out a way to get paid differently, my lifestyle would change. Nothing changes your lifestyle more than changing how you get paid. You can be unhealthy and still have to go to work. Yeah. You can have a bad relationship and still have to go to work. Right. But if how you're paid isn't tied to a chair, you can go anywhere and do anything. Yep. Right? Okay, so this is all important. So then you create projects. So imagine that you have your, let's make it real, a podcast and you have your YouTube channel, and you have these other socials, and you have email, and you have your family, and maybe you have maybe you have like a real job or a, a contractor job. They're all real jobs, yeah. right? But one where they're telling you where to go. Maybe you have sure. all these things. Is there a way for these things to fit together? Where they can't, you have decisions to make. Mm-hmm. Where they can, you can blend them. So I ended up on the road with my family for six months from New York to San Diego, to Mexico, to Canada, back to Hawaii, making money on the road. All the money we made on the road, we spent on the road. In other words, we weren't like living off some, some, some big fund. We, didn't, we weren't using uh, credit cards or, or other weird things. There's a way to be able to make money from anywhere and do the things that you want. Mm-hmm. If you want to be able to pick up your kids from school in the morning and bring them home at night, if you want to coach your kids sports, go on. Do that, and then you will be s- smarter in the way you organize your life. You already know this. We already know this works because most people go, I'm going to do these 10 things, and the 11th step, I'm going to make the magic happen. But the 11th step usually never happens. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to start or grow your YouTube channel? 
Do you feel stuck and need help connecting the dots? Join this free web class where you'll learn the step-by-step -step playbook for YouTube success. We've helped thousands of purpose-driven entrepreneurs just like you grow their influence with video. Register today for this exclusive training at thinkmasterclass.com. So what we do is we go, why don't I focus on that thing that there it is and work from the goal instead of endlessly toward it. So in that sense, goals from experience are, are merely tasks. You already know how to do them. Goals from outside your experience are growth. You don't know how to do them. So in this way, you can do whatever you want, however you want. You can outsource, you can delegate, you can create things. Whoever's listening to this, despite challenges, despite hardship, despite terrible things that might happen in their world, grief is a tunnel, not a cave. Mm -hmm. And grief is a hard thing to go through. And you can find all kinds of ways to support the life you want to live without waiting another day for someone to save you. Because that person doesn't always come. Dude, you know great. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you say step one is to step back and it's not going backwards, but it's just to get a good idea and start planning. I think a good word there is like pre-deciding, like just choosing before. Pre-deciding is so important. Yeah. No, that's a great word. Uh, that's a really good word. The reason that's a good word is because, I mean, think about someone who doesn't want to, let's just make it simple for someone to understand. You don't want to eat sugar. So you tell yourself, I'm going to go to this party, but I'm not going to eat sugar. Well, well, you're tempted by it. You know, you eat it, whatever. But if you really say, I am a person that doesn't eat sugar, you're more likely than not, you know, to, to not, to not right. do it. So when you pre-decide, when you get in situations that are hard at work and whatever else, yeah. So what would you say is step two into, into getting that back or getting that control back? So step step one, you know, stepping back and figuring out, step two would be stepping into it. You kind of step up and then you step in and you step in by actually doing it. So instead of saying, I will one day, mm. I am now. Think of the life between two different people. Two different people could have the same job, same goal, same dream, same right. exact things. Right. One will have all the time in the world to hang out with their family, and the other will have zero. It's because of the way they work. So you step into it by saying, I am a runner is a very different life than I will be a runner. Yep. I am healthy is a very different life then I will be healthy one day. I am making money as a creator is a very different opportunity of life decision than saying I will one mm -hmm. day. So you step in. And then the, then the third step from that would be, because you've now found your voice, you figured out a way to do it. This is, this is so key. As people start to grow, they start to get really frustrated because they find themselves in a role that they don't want. Mm -hmm. And they've never learned that in leadership, it's not about managing or micromanaging. The goal is to delegate results, not methods. That's good. When you delegate results, not methods, that inherently means you're, you're working with people, I call it expert sourcing, that know what they're doing, mm -hmm. that don't necessarily even need to be trained. Yeah. This changes everything, right? For sure. Okay. So, so once, you, once you work towards this, what you find is, if you found your voice, you can help others find theirs. Because every person that's found their voice has an, a unique ability to help others find theirs. Right. And when others find theirs, you create this ecosystem of life, of work, of quote unquote balance, or rather an imbalance in the direction you want it to go. That's like none other. Yeah. I can give you a million examples. No, but yeah. Like, yeah. No, that's beautiful. <laughs> I, I mean, I think what something I've learned in leadership is extending trust. Like initially, I think a lot of times people think that you have to earn your trust, Yes, but you can move so much faster trust by trusting and, and let them mess it. Like you yeah. get to decide yeah. if I have to retreat from, from what I'm Absolutely. empowering you to do. You know? I agree. And have you ever gotten burned? For sure. Me too. And it's like, I'd rather get burned nine times out of 10 and get one that really works mm -hmm. than to never try at all. Right. Now it doesn't feel good. <laughs> and you might start getting smarter and better at the, who you trust and when and how and where, but when you trust first, I'm, I'm with you a hundred percent. Imagine somebody just to go with what you're saying. When you feel like someone doesn't trust you, how do you act? It's weird. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to, how, how do I act if I don't feel like someone trusts me? That's the way we have to work with all kinds of people is, is begin with trust. That's beautiful, man. 100%. So what would you say is like your hope? What do you feel like, what, what would you hope that people just would grasp from, from the message of your book ultimately? Let me give you a quick story. I, I grew up in, I grew up in San Diego 
and when I was 16, and I wanted money. You know, aren't as many. That's what you want, right? And my dad goes, he goes, I go, I go, Dad, I want a job. He goes, You don't want a job. I'm like, What do you mean I don't want a job? Like, what do you like? Where's dad ever? How could you say something like that? You know, you're supposed to tell me to get a job. He goes, No, no, no. And it was summertime. And he goes, I go, Well, I still want money. And he said this. He said, Go to El Centro, which is like three hours away from from where I lived, and it's uh, where the farms are. He said, Go to El Centro, take the family van, take the seats out of the car, go with your little brother who was I was 16, he was 14. And we go all the way to El Centro and he says, ask the watermelon farmers if you can buy their irregular sized watermelons that they can't sell to the grocery stores. And we did. And we brought them home and we sold them to our friends' parents and we sold them, you know, at the park and we did all these things. We made more money in one day than we would have made working minimum wage the entire summer. That's insane. I didn't think much about it until, until even more recently. I started writing the book. I started looking back and I was like, that really was an incredible mind set shift for me that's thinking different yeah so sometimes we think we know what we want but sometimes having a mentor who can open up our minds i could have never thought of that on my own right but a mentor who can say here's how you do it here's a cool way here's how i've done i've done it here's a creative way and if you're willing to do the work and, and make it happen not only will that thing work out and even if it doesn't it will change the way you think about your opportunities this message is about thinking differently. Mm-hmm. You know, after my, my brother-in-law passed away, my son passed away, we had three foster kids that came and went. And it's, it was sad to see them go because there's a reason they were in our home. You right. know what I mean? My wife had a stroke and lost her memory. She got it back. I, my, 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 my son got hit by a car. He should be dead. He's okay. He kind of sees himself now as Superman. Like, he beat the car. You know what I mean? Like, it's a cool mindset for him. But I remember one day I thought, does God hate me? Like, what's going on right now, you know? Mm-hmm. And I thought, all these things are happening. They're not necessarily happening to me, but they're attached to me because of all these people that I love. And then I thought, it was an interesting thought. I never thought it before. I had this, this little conversation in my head that said, love God unconditionally. And to me, that meant keep your faith, do your thing. Don't blame, you know, uh, daddy in the sky every time something yeah. goes wrong because then all, all emotions go up and down and focus on what you can control, what you can do and go back, love your family, you know, yeah. do these things. And that's been a powerful message because I learned that how you spend your time is how you show your love. And if you're constantly spending your time trying to do something to get something else, how are you showing your love to those people around you? So good. And when you procrastinate, I'm not, I'm not against it. You have to remember what it, it, it can be used as a positive tool. Because no one's more productive than procrastinator <laughs> with an impending deadline. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if you know that about yourself, you can live your life and you can create systems, moats, processes to protect it instead of sacrificing your life for work mm-hmm. and never getting your life back. Because that's people's plan on purpose. Yeah. Wrongly. Flip it around, man. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard it uh, that... People spell love T I M E. Ooh, that's good. Uh, especially kids, you know, learning that I have Absolutely. a young daughter. But that's huge, man. A W Tozer says, um, "What you think about when you think about God is the most important thing about you." Interesting. And your concept of God, I, I just want to commend you. You oh, know, thanks. there's so much of of Scripture. T- you know, uh, the Book of James says, "Count it all joy when we face trials of many kinds." because it produces something in us. And I, I see a fruitful life in, okay. in your life. Totally. Even just the joy I get when, yeah. when I, you know, look at, look at this guy <laughs> smiling, you know, always smiling, <laughs> laughing through, telling these stories. I'm like, dude, man, uh, I, you've had a I life, know, bro. man. Life's but, crazy, dude. But thank you for using that and yeah. sharing your message. And, I, and yeah, I hope that people grab, grab this idea of to think differently about themselves, their time, and, yes. and how they can actually use it to yes. serve other people. Yes, you know, it is. It's all about, like, goodness, you know, and, and, and glory to God and glory to others and doing your best. If you measure for money, you're going to strive towards money. Mm. If you measure for time, you'll get time, but you can measure for both. You can have money and meaning. You can have time flow and cash flow. And when terrible things happen, you can assign meaning to that terrible so thing. Even if you haven't heard a voice telling you what's good, you can assign positive meaning and choose to be better, not bitter. And yeah. I think that's an incredible message. So good. Hey, so where where can people find your book oh. um, and and find you and what you're doing? Yeah, thank you. My book's everywhere. It's on all the bookstores, you know, wherever they're sold. You can get them in Barnes and Noble. Um, someone just told me they found out on Fifth Avenue in in, uh, in 
in New York at Barnes and Noble. I was like, that's no cool. way, that's, that's so sweet. awesome. I was like freaking out. Yeah. I was so excited. That's you know, cool. Just like a little kid. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. <laughs> but yeah, it's on Amazon, man. Just to get on Amazon. Or go to richnorton.com. Go to richnorton.com slash time. And I have a free challenge and guide that helps you like go step by step into creating these systems for your own for your own life. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, brother. That was awesome. Appreciate you. 